Greetings and welcome to STEAM with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. My name is Raynetta and today I'm here with Brian from the Prince George's County Park Planning and Development Division. Today, we're going to explore the STEAM behind the construction of our park and playground site. Then we'll meet with some friends to put together our very own straw structure. Let's get started. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Stewart I am the Construction Representative Supervisor here with the Park Planning and Development Division within the Merlin National Capital Park Planning Commission. And we're here to talk about STEAM and how it's involved with the everyday ins and outs of what we do here within the Park Planning and Development Division. Well, first there's science. During the architectural and design process, building science is used to determine what needs to be in a facility to optimize the building's use. Models can be used to predict the energy use over the building's life, solar heat and radiation distribution, as well as airflow and other physical phenomena within a facility. Science is also used in everyday life, similar to condensation on a cold water cup of ice. So similar to this, you have the condensation of the water on the cup itself. Science is used in buildings with insulations and different things to determine how to stop the transfer of cold air in and out of your facility, similar to the condensation on this cup. As you can see here, technology is used by design consultants, engineers, and architects to develop facilities throughout their organization and throughout the Prince George's County. They use 3D modeling, drones, and other virtual reality type equipment to determine and to develop drawings to take it from a plan view to a 3D view as you see here on the computer. Software like AutoCAD, ARCHICAD, and BIM are used when doing those activities. Art can also be shown through a deep connection between art and architecture. As you see here on this rendering here, I mean, it looks really realistic. It looks like the actual facility, but technically it's similar to a piece of art. You know, when the designers take what they have on paper, as plan view as you see here, this is the same facility that you see here. This is just a different horizontal view of it versus the ver vertical view of a 3D rendering of this facility. Last but not least, there's math. Math is used to assist designers and engineers that are designing vertical and horizontal facilities. Tools such as rulers, calculators, scales, protractors, compasses are all examples of what you use in and out of your math classrooms day in and day out, and it's in your rooms today. Currently, I have some tools here that we're using in and out of construction daily. We have levels, we have rulers, we have safety PPE, so which is safety vests, so vehicles can see you when you're in the construction field. Hard hats, you don't want nothing to hit you on your head. We have data tracking instruments from surveying equipment, as well as we have a transit set up here over in the corner where you use this instrument to measure grades and elevations out in the field. Engineering occurs when design consultants and architects apply science and technology to real world applications and design facilities, structures, and parks using that um, engineering. They do this by combining systems such as structural, electrical, mechanical, lighting, acoustics, and fire protection in their designs. Here we have some designs layout of a park of a trail that's been installed here recently in Prince George's County. And as you can see, it's sitting here on the light table, which makes it a lot easier to read. To read. Light tables have been used for years in architecture and engineering, and it allows you to look at the drawings while also making corrections and red lines as needed. So you can get trace paper, you can trace over the document, send your edits in and different things of that sort. So. Um, here you see, as you can see, it has the layout of the drawing of the trail itself. It has grades, it has elevations, and it shows the general contractors or the sub consultants or whoever's doing the work how to apply and how to construct the trail as necessary. Wow, a lot of detail goes into constructing a site. And drafts are for are people knowing what the building will look like before it's built. And scales help you measure how long something is. Yes, the integration of all of these subjects helps to ensure the proper formation and construction of the sites we love to visit. Now let's try out our steam abilities and build our very own straw structure. Step one, 
Use the towel spacers to connect the straws into line segments. Step two, experiment with different lengths. The more you connect, the longer your lines become. Step three, connect the ends of line segments to create different angles. Four line segments become a square. Step four, test to form in different shapes like pentagons, hexagons, heptagons, and octagons. The more sides, the more stable your base will be. Step five, create three-dimensional forms by extruding. Add layers by connecting vertically and horizontally. Looking for ways to further test your steam skills? Continue joining the pieces together to build a taller structure without having it topple over. Engineer structures as tall as you. If you enjoyed this activity, please be sure to check out our website, pgextremeteams.com, for more information on STEAM. And don't forget to upload your pictures and videos on social media using the hashtag PGParksSteam. Thanks for visiting with us today. We hope you have fun. Until next time, stay healthy, be safe, and keep steaming on. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in again and visit the online resource center at pgparks.com, your one-stop shop for fun and fitness at home. This is the place to live more, play more, indoors.